Hey guys, it's Andres again. So today I want to talk to you about what everybody in Airbnb is talking about, which is the recession and all the bookings going down and why they're quitting Airbnb and all that type of stuff. I want to give you my thoughts and our experience so far into this uh, recession period, and hopefully you can take something out of it. If you do, I would appreciate it if you hit the like button and maybe subscribe so you can see some future content. So let's get into it. But at the same time, I'm going to leave you with two tips at the end of what we are doing to kind of navigate this harder time and the slower bookings and also the slower season here in the Smoky Mountains coming up um, after Christmas and New Year's. So I'll share those two at the end, but let's get into it. So is Airbnb slowing down? I believe the answer is yes. Everybody is talking about it. We are seeing it firsthand when we compare our October of 2021 to this October and the same thing with November. We are seeing that it's much harder to get those bookings. When we started end of September of 2021, it felt too easy. Uh, we got 100% booked uh, last week of September, all of October, all of November. We couldn't believe it. It was too easy that we just opened up and all of a sudden every single night is busy and people are coming in and giving us money. It was unreal. Now, it must have been one of the best times to start an Airbnb, but that doesn't mean that right now it's not. It's, it's not as good, but I think you can still open an Airbnb today and be successful. I just think that now it's going to take a little more work and you're going to have to be a better host. You're going to have to provide a better space and you're going to have to care and get into this for the right reasons, not just the money. So in my eyes, what's happening right now, it's kind of good for people like us. We are owner operators and we kind of build this by ourselves uh, with very, very little uh, leverage. The only leverage we did at one point, we applied for some zero APR uh, credit cards. And so that is everything we did as far as leveraging ourselves. And so going into a time of um, a little bit more unknowns, it's really nice not to have a giant mortgage payment, credit card payments, or maybe a partner that's taking part of the paycheck or expecting a paycheck. So simple and less leverage, it's really nice to have in a time like this. The next big thing that we got going for us, we have an emergency fund. So that makes us sleep really well at night, that if all of a sudden tomorrow something was to happen, let's say this tent gets blown away, which we actually have to put it down. We, we're, we're done with the tent season. It's way too cold right now. I just came here to shoot the video. There's good light. But anyways, um, if one of the glam sides, something happens, water heater, something floods, uh, whatever, maybe our, even our own car breaks down, we have that emergency reserve right there, ready to go. I have a feeling that a lot of the people that got into this business and thinking that they can make a bunch of money might have used all of their capital to just get started. And now there's very little reserves in that savings account, which I would be a little worried about because knowing that maybe you're not getting the same amount of bookings anymore, you're not going to be able to save up as fast as you thought, or maybe you didn't even think at all, which is terrible. <laughs> Something else now that makes us feel good about navigating this recession or this slowdown period is that we actually have good reviews because we got into this to be actually hosts. It seems like um, all the videos don't talk about the fact that you should be a good host. And why did you get into this if you're not willing to put the time and effort to communicate with guests and be accommodating to them? Um, and so, I don't know, sometimes I think people forget to talk about that this is a big service business. Uh, yeah, it's really cool that you can pick A-frames and Pacific Domes and all this cool stuff and Instagram pages, and that gets you really, really excited. But on the other side of that, as we learned, is the service aspect of it. And that is the guest communication, your rules, your policies, uh, making sure that the guest has a good experience and maintaining the property accordingly to that and then updating your property according to all those different reviews and comments that you get from your guests. So really, if you're not in this for being a good host, you should get out right now or you shouldn't even get started because it's going to be a waste of money and you're going to hate your life in this business. But yes, to come back to the reviews, uh, Meadowview, I just checked. We have 116 reviews and we have a 4.98. That's our biggest, uh, most popular uh, glam site. Uh, Silver Chalet is next. That one has 16 reviews out of five stars. And then these two dome tents are at, um, they're in 4.8 or, yeah, 4.8. They don't have as many reviews, though. They, they're somewhat new. So having good reviews, it's key because now that people are going to get a little more picky maybe about where to go um, and all the prices are going to maybe go down and the 
the nightly rate may not make sense anymore. So what if we're still at $120 and everybody else drops their price and it's like, well, what is this place $120 for? And maybe they're like, oh, wow, they got five stars or 4.98. So uh, people are going to see that and they think it's going to make a difference. And again, that's part of this business. It's not so much what structure you picked and all that type of stuff, but it's actually... Are you being a good host and do you have good reviews and do people like to come to your place? And finally, a big thing we got going for us, it's our location. We are right next to the 40 freeway, so there's always traffic going by. So we're always going to get that random one night stay. And on the other side of the freeway against the south, it's uh, Gatlinburg, Pigeon Forge, Sevierville and the Smoky Mountains. So there's a lot of events going on there, big weekends. There's always some type of big car show or home show or something like that. And so that attracts a lot of people. And sometimes people don't want to stay right in the heart of Gatlinburg because if you have ever been, you would remember the traffic. It is horrendous. Lots and lots of traffic. So over here, we're a little tucked away, far away from all the craziness, but you can still get to it during the day, spend your time there, spend your money there, and then come back over here for the night and have a good night's sleep. So those are pretty much the key points that I think are going to be good for us in, in our type of business. Now, I think this is the time where all those part-time people that are just using this as a hobby are going to get out because they're going to realize that their listing is not good enough or that it's too much, too much of a headache to charge $70, $80 a night and it's not worth it anymore. And you can tell who those part-timer hobby people are because you go to those listings and you see the pictures, first thing, are not professional. They're all vertical. They've been taken on a phone, so they're not horizontal like it should be in real estate photography. And then the space is just not quite right. It's look, It was like a second thought. And maybe it was an accidental Airbnb, or maybe they just tried to make a little bit extra money because somebody else was making a bunch of money, and they said, well, I'm going to make some too. And that was okay before. But now that there is a, a lot of supply and not enough demand, only those really good listings are going to continue to get bookings, while those ugly ones are probably going to start to go down, and eventually those people are going to be sick of it, and they're going to they're going to quit. They're going to go away. And so that's why I was saying that this could be kind of good because it looks like everybody jumped in and now it's time for the good people to stay and everybody else to go do something else, which who knows what that's going to be. I'm sure some big uh, new thing is going to come up and everybody's going to go into that. But I have seen this uh, many, many times over my life already. At one point, I was flipping mobile homes in Phoenix, Arizona. I started. It was really cool. I started on the weekends and nights. Eventually, I quit my job to do that full time, and it was great. But then I realized that my bandit sign on the corner was surrounded by a lot more bandit signs. Everybody, it felt like, it started doing mobile home investing. It became much harder to find a good deal. And I was... Um, I was having to bid on homes instead of just getting them. And so it wasn't as profitable anymore. At that point, only the really good mobile home investors that were on it for the right reasons were going to survive. Everybody else that got in because they heard like, hey, if you flip mobile homes, you're going to make a bunch of money. They got in, then things got hard, then they quit. And so again, I think a lot of people got in this for the wrong reason, which is money. Uh, they forgot that this is a service business. They forgot that you have to be a host. You have to answer your phone. You're going to answer the same questions over and over again because it doesn't matter if you wrote it on your list and people are still going to ask you. Uh, even this weekend, we had somebody walking all over. I could see in the camera on the parking lot. Somebody's just walking at night with a flashlight all over the place. And finally, the, they called me and they're like, hey, which one? And I told them and it was all on their text message, on their email, reservation. It's everywhere. But still, it's going to happen. And I don't get upset, even though I had just fallen asleep. It's part of it. That's what it takes to be in this business. Be successful and be a good host. So I hope the point is clear. Everybody got into Airbnb to make money. And accounts like Rob Built and those other big accounts have made it very clear that there is a lot of money potential. And it's true. It's there. And it was there. I think it's still there, but not in such a scale anymore. But I think if you're willing to put in the time and build something good, and by good I mean build a good stay, something that actually makes sense, buy a nice mattress, and then make sure it has all the amenities that the guest is going to need more than anything, follow up with your guests, have good replies, and be courteous to your and be respectful to your guests. They're your client. They're who are paying you the money. Just the other day, we were watching a video on YouTube about these people. They had really, really cool, unique stays. I mean, like they were like world class. And we went to their Airbnb account to check them out. And the first two reviews that popped out were pretty bad. And it was all about the host not being very nice about replies. It was about the host not saying sorry. 
It was about little things that didn't work. And it seems that they weren't addressed, little details. From the outside, it looked like a great place. But then when we went to read the reviews, they weren't that great. And actually, we looked at the rating. Over, they had good reviews. I'm not just saying it was all bad. They did have really good reviews as well. But their average was 4.77, which doesn't even qualify as a super hope. You got to be careful, you know. <laughs> it's just, why? why? Why would you do that? Why would you build such a cool place and then be such a terrible host? Maybe if you're gonna do that, you know, you should just build them and pass them on. Just sell the sell the place to somebody else that's willing to put in the time and be a good host. You know, something that we take a lot of pride in is that we feel that we build this place right. And by that I mean that we actually were looking in everything that we decided was on what would the guest enjoy or what would the guest want. It is, it seems like we did a good job because we keep hearing over and over from our customers, our guests, that we thought of everything. That's something that, that we've heard so many times. You guys have thought of everything and that makes us feel so good because Chelsea spent so much time uh, researching and maybe shopping and then she would buy something and she would return it because it didn't fit right or maybe the can opener didn't work okay so we went to buy another one, a better one, coffee makers, little things like that. And so it is really, really nice when I'm walking around the property here doing something and I, I catch up with one of the guests and the first thing they say, uh, I mean, it, it, I don't mean to brag, but it has happened a lot of times. They're like, wow, this place is amazing. It's much better than the pictures. And you guys have thought of everything. And that makes us feel so good because we built this place ourselves. We put a lot of time, a lot of money, took a lot of risk to do this. And to hear that from the guests, it's awesome. And kind of, it doesn't really matter anymore what the guests paid to stay. It doesn't really matter. At that point, when the guest tells you that, to us, it doesn't really matter what they paid because it feels so good to know that a year ago, there was nothing here. It was just a house with an old barn that was used as a garage and an actual barn and four acres of pasture. Now people from all over the place and even uh, from outside the US have come and they stay here and we get a lot of birthdays, a lot of anniversaries, a lot of honeymoons, and then obviously a bunch of vacations. The reason they're here is because of what we did. And it just feels really, really good. And when I hear those comments, and I'm, I'm getting really touchy-feely right now, but it, it truly is, um, it's really awesome. It feels so good. And when I get this reaction, and just talking about it right now, you know, it feels so good to have that reaction. It makes me think that we are in the right business and we are in it for the right reasons. That feeling is really, really nice. And if you think you're not gonna have that feeling, uh, and this part just doesn't make any sense to you, um, maybe this is not the right business because I think being a good host, it's a huge, huge part of surviving a bad time like a recession. Okay, enough emotional stuff. It's now time to share the two things I promised. What we are doing to try to get through this next few months before hopefully things normalize again and maybe we hit high season again next summer. So that's a long time from today. So in the meantime, we are, we're doing two things. The first thing is pretty simple and a lot of people are doing it, which is trying to get some midterm uh, renters in our units. So here it's a small town. Uh, we're gonna see if that works at all. Uh, there are not a lot of options uh, for rentals in the area and definitely not furnished. Now, at the same time, I'm not sure how many people are gonna want to shower outside on a daily basis, but we are. We will see. So we have listed one of our spaces uh, for a one to two to three month lease to see if we can maybe fully book those nights. Obviously, we're gonna be taking a much lower uh, nightly rate, but at the same time, this rolls into the second thing that we're doing. I think we have to be really <laughs> very thoughtful about this and let go of our ego. We thought about ourselves as a luxury glamping property, which when you think luxury, you think expensive. So we were trying to get a pretty high nightly rate, higher than normal for the area. So I think it's time to let go of that theory for a little bit because we're seeing the bookings not come in. So one way to, to go about it is to just lower our nightly rate. So we have gone from our weekends, we're at 125 minimum. Uh, we have dropped those to 99. And then our weekly rate was at a 99 uh, rate for, for any weekday. And we have now dropped it all the way, I think, to either $69 or $79 for Meadowview and $69 for uh, the, the other tiny home, Silver Chalet. It's a little sad, you know, to see that we're not going to get that big nightly rate. But at the same time, 
I do feel that that's just an ego thing. And we had this idea, or maybe me more than more than Chelsea, I had this idea that, uh, well, we're the best in the area and we're trying to be the, the top performer and we're trying to give the best amenities and the best uh, experience. So we should be charging the top dollar. We're excited to keep playing around with this business. And uh, we're excited about listing the main home and see how it's a three bedroom, two bath. I'm working on the master bathroom right now. Um, so we're excited to see how that unit performs on Airbnb, which is just a traditional home. That is kind of my take. I would like to hear what you guys have to say, if I'm right, if I'm wrong, if you care, if you don't care. But uh, I hope it added value to you and I hope you find this useful. If you did, please hit the like button so other people may watch this video as well. But that's all I got today. So I'll see you next time.